Oh, well, hello there. Hello, my friends. <clears throat> there we... Ooh. I've had that shit turned around. The whole time. All right. Two guys, one podcast. I am the lowest common denominator. What do you want? I lose more and more respect for you every time we do this show. <laughs> Two guys, one podcast. Cesspool of disease and bacteria. Anything I show you on the internet is fact now. You just walk around using your lips. I have full lips, but I also have a very tiny tongue. Two guys, one podcast. And this is the podcast. Welcome to Two Guys, One Podcast. I'm one guy. And I'm the other. And this is the podcast. My fucking Batman, my friend. I don't care. How can you not care? It's like it's all Bat's Eve, almost. We're so close. In the future world in which people are listening to this podcast episode, you and I will both have seen The Dark Knight Rises. Most of our listeners will likely have seen it you, since we you will catered to a nerd audience. You will audience. definitely have seen I'll definitely have seen it, yes. You will definitely have seen it because you will you will move your schedule around to make time for that. Let me tell you exactly how I much. Won't. But but you are going to see it sometime this weekend. Yeah, if it happens if it happens that I have If it fits. If it fits, I'll go see it. If it doesn't fit, I'm not going to break my back to try to see this movie. Let me tell you what happened to me today. This morning I woke up and realized that I've got some scheduling conflicts. I uh uh, my ex-wife and I had to switch around the nights that I have the kids because of a conflict that she's got with work. And so that changed my calendar. I'm checking that out. Turns out I'm working a morning shift on Saturday, which I don't normally. Th- that kind of threw me off. I'm trying to fit that in. You and I have to put in the podcast recording. I'm trying to think where everything goes. I, I start looking at, I'm not going to get a chance to see The Dark Knight Rises on Friday night because I'm going to have the kids. Do I have it in me for a midnight showing? And I got to tell you, as much as I want to see The Dark Knight Rises... Party puberty has put me past the age of the midnight showing. So you're about to get Sorkin'd right here. I stopped listening because at the very beginning I wanted to say this. Since your current girlfriend has the call sign Honey Bun, your ex-wife needs a call sign as well. Like You can't just say ex-wife. Like, you know, maybe something sad. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, no, but she's but she's it's not a bad relationship. It's a great relationship. Um, maybe if I made her a sour fruit, perhaps, uh, or a sour candy, like like warheads. <laughs> that's a little harsh, I think, and people will take it wrong. I believe. I don't care how they take it. Um, well, she might eventually listen to, to listen to the podcast. I don't care if she listens to well, it. I do. Hmm. And then I don't care if she thinks what I just said was harsh. Well, because your your ex wife does. She loves me. That's a true story. That's a true story. She does. She's she adores you. Really. And if she hears that I said that I don't care, she she'll love me even more. Probably so. Uh, I I tell you what, submit if you got an idea for what we call my ex wife, some cool candy. That's what she needs to be. There you go, a cool sour candy. I'm down with that, perhaps. Fun dip would not be appropriate. <laughs> you can send you can send in your suggestions. Two guys, two guys, one pod at me dot com. Two guys, one pod at me dot com. That's our email address. In case you wondered, Batman. So here's what I did. When I'm looking at my calendar and I'm like, okay, I can't see it. I'm not going to be able to go see it on Friday night. I'm not going to be able to wait until Saturday night since I'm working the morning shift on Saturday. That's going to be too GD long. There would be too many other people that will have seen the movie. I can't stand for it. So I'm like midnight showing. I got to do a midnight showing. I don't have it in me. I'd sleep through the last 45 minutes of the movie. I'm not an old man. I'm a man who gets up at a reasonable hour in the morning, and I need my beauty rest. So you not seeing the end of the movie would just bug you? Oh, it wouldn't bug me. It would destroy me. It would slay me. If I watched half of a masterpiece and then didn't get the conclusion, oh, it would, it would, it would ruin me. So I do it all the time. It drives my wife crazy. You, it drives me a little crazy, too. You do it at, at social gatherings. We have, you've got people at your house, I'm done. Like, like five, six, seven people over to see a movie, and... And all of a sudden, you, like, and you're the one. You're like, oh, you guys got to see this movie. It's the best movie ever. And then you put it in, and like 20 minutes in, you're like, oh, I'm out. And you you go to bed, and we're all up till 4 a.m. in the morning watching whatever damn film you've put on our, our queue. Have you seen a bad one yet? No, but I keep all dodging right. the blood of heroes. Once you see it, you'll be like, oh, man, I was stupid for I was so wrong. dodging this movie, this masterpiece. This is how I handled my Batman problem. I walked into my boss's office this morning and I said, boss. No, you didn't. Boss, <laughs> how badly do you need me on Friday afternoon? You bet. 
begged off. You begged off work. I took you off work. You begged off work to go see this I movie. Took, I took a half Did day. I, I took a half day of vacation on. time. <laughs> I scheduled. I scheduled. Vacation. I scheduled so a half day of vacation. I scheduled you. a half day of vacation to go see The Dark Knight Rises. <laughs> That's what a grown-up does. He bought it. He was like, cool with it. He didn't buy it. He was like, oh, sure. Oh, <laughs> of man. Of course. I, he's do a really you, cool is, boss. Do you get vacation time or did you just say, hey, boss, look, I'm, I'm thinking I deserve some vacation time. Give me half a day. And what we have is one of those, we have a very, we have oh, a loosey-goosey man. kind of family atmosphere. And as long as you don't, like, as long as you don't take too much, then it doesn't really matter how much you've taken. You know what I mean? Like they don't necessarily. No, I don't. Uh, well, but you work for a large corporation, and like they have, it's they know exactly what you have, and it's ordered and it's manual because there's too many employees to watch, and people would take advantage. The situation we have here is is, well, are you are you laying off of work all the time? Is it becoming a problem when you when you're not around? I work I work on weekends. I work at night. I work early in the morning before I get into the office because I'm a web guy. I do all these things when I'm not actually checked in. So. The occasional afternoon or early morning that I end up doing something with the kids or going to see The Dark Knight Rises kind of works out all right. That's the benefit of being a DJ, folks. Like, did you make something up? No, I told him. I said I'd like to take off Friday afternoon to go see The Dark Knight Rises. All right. <laughs> so, What if you would have said no? I'd, I'd say, you didn't have a plan B, did you? I'd, I'd say, well... I might need to take off Friday afternoon because I'm going to be really sick if I don't get to see The Dark Knight Rises. <laughs> <laughs> so before I uh, before I came up here to record today, I was doing man stuff. I was helping our mutual friend build some uh, shelves for his wife's uh, new location. Oh, hey, that no, that's for real man stuff. Look at you. Yeah, power tools and everything. How'd that turn out? Oh uh, well, I mean, we've done. He and I have done projects before. You know, they've turned out well. Yeah, you guys, uh, you guys even built professionally once uh i don't think it was together though i mean it was a, it was for the same company i was just i'd left a year before he got there no i mean uh locally you guys did a little oh, small yeah yeah yeah. i mean he got paid i didn't i got a t-shirt yeah there you go you got an experience <laughs> boy all your friends pay you an experience that works out real well for us i gotta tell you a honey bun story is it a good one I think it's a real good one. I was very proud of her for it. Let's put it like oh, that. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Like she did something awesome? She did. I think she did. Uh, Honey Bun's at the uh, Superstore the other day. Okay. She's in line at the checkout. She's got uh, two items. Dude in front of her in line. There's one guy. He's about to be checked out. He's got like a basket full of stuff, you know, a small basket. He says, hey, do you want to go ahead? She says, no, 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 not not a problem. Just thank you, though. So the girl's checking him out, and in the process of checking him did out- Did he hit on her? Uh Honey bun? Yeah. No. He was oh. he was just polite. Like a normal human being in their mid thirties. Okay, well when I'm already disappointed super in the story already now. It gets way better. Okay. You gotta give it a minute. I'll edit this down and it'll be very pithy. <laughs> 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 the cashier says to the guy, like again and again, and references it in different ways, the fact that she doesn't want to be at work today. Oh yeah, I really don't want to be at work today. Oh, I'm like just, the cashier's telling him. Yes. I just, oh, God, I just, I, you know, I'd rather be anywhere. Man, I can't wait to get off. Don't want to be at work today. Wish I wasn't there. Where are you headed? Anywhere would be better than here. Mm. Stuff like that. Just over and over again. The whole time she's checking him out, bitching and moaning about her job. And, you know, you know Honey Bun. She's the nicest person in the world. Yeah. She'd catch anybody on a bad day. It had been a busy day. She's For her. She, Yeah. She's been working this summer camp. She's had, like, dozens of children all day long. She was... You know, elbow deep in concrete at one point during the day, making like stepping stones for these kids or something. She's had a shitty day. And this woman, but the woman's getting paid. They're at her job. She's just continually bitching to the customers. And before Honey Bun even gets to the cashier, while she's still checking out the guy in front of her, she says, ma'am, if you really don't want to be here, you can go work at the burger joint down the street. Their customer service sucks too. You'd fit right in. No, she didn't. I swear to God, dude. Did she really? What do you you think the cashier responds to that? Fuck you. No, she gives... Huh? As if, oh, I didn't hear you. Honey Bun's not letting her off the off the hook. She says, oh, you heard me. Then she repeats it a little louder to make sure everybody around her hears it too. If you don't want to be here so badly, you can go work at the burger joint down the street. Their customer service sucks too, and you'd fit right in. I told her, I said, it's just like 
Cartman in the fucking South Park movie. Oh, I'm sorry. What I meant to say was, would you like to suck my bows, Mr. Garrison? Like, he fucking, she fucking pulled out the megaphone on her, man. The girl didn't say another word. She just went to checking him out. And when she's done checking the, uh, the guy out, she says, sir, you have a nice day. And hands him his bag. He turns, looks at Honey Bun and says, no. You have a nice day, and points at her. I thought it was fucking brilliant, man. Oh man, I oh that's good, dude. More people need to be put in their place. I I'm a guy who like likes I'm here to, to get groceries. If I if I wanted to hear somebody bitch, I'd go home and be with my wife. Yeah. Oh, you, you hate your job? Join the club. It's called Everybody, and we meet at the bar. I mean, there's there's signs, there's T-shirts, there's slogans for that. There's bumper stickers. We all. If you if anybody loved their job, people would stop paying you to do it, motherfucker. Like, come on. No, 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 people do. No, people do love their job. You love your job. Well, but I'm a creative, and because of that, I don't make as much money as I would in a, a man of my talents and experience in any other field would be significantly better paid. I am lower paid because lots of other people want to do the job that I have. Imagine that talking for a living's a pretty good gig, and lots of people want to do it. Hmm. You know, you know, it'd be you know, it'd been awesome. You know how like uh, every cashier has like that little uh, intercom phone. Yeah. Oh, man, if you'd have just picked up that intercom phone and said, um, I said, <laughs> like, end of the phone and everybody in the old place, oh, man, that'd have been magical. I'm a guy who tips. I understand how hard it is to serve people and deal with the public all day. You're a guy who has to deal with the public. I have to deal with the public as part of, you know, my station duties when I'm doing, you know, remote broadcasts and things like that. It sucks. People suck. And when you deal with them over and over and over again all day, it wears on you. I get that. But as long as you're collecting the check, you got to keep that shit in tow, man, and just keep doing your damn job because everybody else does too. Dude, people, people are stupid, man. The majority of people on this planet are stupid people that are only put on this planet to exhale the carbon dioxide that the trees need to live. We're really just tree food? Just the stupid ones are. Like, if we got rid of all the stupid people in the world, that would shrink the size of our rainforest like that. <laughs> oh, you're saying we'd have deforestation, but it'd because be a fine thing. It wouldn't be an issue. Yeah, I could, I could, I could deal with a few less trees. I got you. <laughs> nice. Hey, you know what's awesome? Sex. <laughs> well, yes, that's true, too. Showing this podcast that you listen to love in itunes that's awesome we're in itunes now we're easy to find you can search us two guys even you can find us pretty easily that way two guys one and we're like right there at the top two guys one podcast it goes straight to us oh yeah oh pretty much like it's super easy to How find many us two now guys one podcasts are out there though uh, there's only one and they haven't made an episode in, in in like a year or so but there's lots of podcast episodes that have some combination of those words You know what I mean? So there's lots of people that show up in the list. But we're right up at the top now when you search for us. Um, You can review us if you like the show. If you don't like the show, don't review us. Just email us and bitch at us that way. Yeah, I say review us. Review us? Negative reviews? Yeah. All right. I'm all right with that. It's got to be like a spectacularly... Like don't just give it one star. Give it one star and then say what's shitty about it. Oh, yeah. And like make it it horrific so that people be like, there's no way this show's that bad. I got to listen to it. (laughs) Like, if it's that bad, I need to hear something that horrible. So, like, like point out how reviling it is. Yeah, if, you just, if you just don't like it, then don't say anything. Destroying families. It. The Sodom and Gomorrah yeah, podcast. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Okay, I could be down with that. If you got a Hellfire and Brimstone review for us, go ahead and give us yeah, that. Yeah, I want to hear that'd it. That'd be awesome. Tons of new listeners, too, man. Uh, people picking us up all over the uh, United States and the world, for God's sakes. We yeah. got listeners in the UK and uh, Japan. Uh, Japan, El, Germany, El Salvador. El Salvador. San Salvador, El Salvador. It sounds very nice coming off your tongue. If you say so. You don't think so? No. G- give me a sense, San Salvador. San Salvador. There you go. Doesn't that feel good? Fe- no. no. All right, then. All right. Did it sound sexy, though? A little bit. Right. You gave it a little roll there at the end. I, you know, the hair on the back of my neck stood up a little bit. All right. Uh, people in Detroit, Philly. Yeah, those are new ones. Yeah, uh, L.A. We've got listeners in D.C. Welcome to all of you. Little Rock. Yeah, Little Rock picked up today too. Is excited yeah. to hear that. Um, anyway, welcome to all the new listeners. Hope you guys continue to listen. It's much less fun talking to ourselves, but we'll do that too. So, just know that by not listening, you're not stopping the podcast. Does that look like a vagina to you? 
No. Really? No. That'd be an ugly vagina. I didn't say. It was an attractive vagina. I, I suppose if you told me that was a vagina, I can't imagine it being one, I suppose. Now that's disgusting what you're doing. See, this is one of those times where I'm very glad we don't have a camera. <laughs> Ugh. We got a few mistakes, other guy. <laughs> They're admitted to a mistake. <laughs> I've made a huge mistake. We or me? Well, some for both of us, actually. Okay. First off, we were bitching about Val Kilmer. We bitched a lot about Peter Jackson, but we bitched a little about Val Kilmer, I don't, too. There's no mistake. He's not good. Oh, well, no, that's not the mistake. Okay. We did forget one of his best roles, though. What? Real genius. Uh, it's uh, a great comedy, man. And Val anchors it. Uh, I mean, that's like that's like saying, that's like saying uh, what is it, First Bite? That's like saying First Bite's an awesome movie. First Bite is a pretty awesome oh. movie. How can you like... So here's so we found your line. You like shitty movies. You don't like shitty comedies. That's your real line. Yeah, right yeah. There. I don't. I don't like shitty comedies. Boy. I like shitty horror movies. But you don't like shitty comedies. No. See, I'm a big fan of shitty comedies. It turns out. I like I like schlocky, unsuccessful, largely not worth their while comedies. Uh, nothing but trouble, starring Chevy Chase and Dan Aykroyd, I, Demi Moore. I love great nothing one. but trouble. There's there's nothing good in that movie other than the The fantastic dude the the, babies are amazing the organ solo with dan Aykroyd in the courtroom that's the one that i love so much it's badass the daughter's worth watching john candy oh john candy as the mute daughter yeah yeah that's pretty good too anyway i i loved val kilmer and real genius and that's one that we we failed to mention when we were uh that's not a mistake shortchanging his career i think so Uh, the other thing we uh discussed the definition of foible yeah, what, what is it? It's, something, it's like a faux pas, isn't it? One definition is the part of a sword or foil blade between the middle and the point. So oh, yeah, the middle of that. a blade. Yeah. I, I had forgotten, but you and I should both know. We both did a little blade work. And and two, a minor flaw or shortcoming in character or behavior, i.e. a weakness. They admired their teacher despite his foibles, for instance. Also, the the whole question of foible came up because we were, we were discussing one of Peter Jackson's movies, uh, movies Meet the Foibles. It's not Meet the Foibles. It's Meet the Feebles. And uh, we'll have links uh, for that movie, and uh, you could check that out on our- I think you just our... like saying the word foible. Foible is a great word. I've said it many, many times. Say it real slow. Foible. Foible. Foible? Foible. It is fun to say, though. Yeah. Foible. It's one of my favorite words. It's a great one. TV themes. I got a lot of- We got some shit. Back. I got, yeah, I got a lot of- People questioned my intelligence often on this topic. First off, we got several links uh, for some for some lists of the best theme songs. Look, there's, a, there's a lot of them out there. There's a lot of good ones out there. There's a ton. I'm sticking. I am sticking to Andy Griffith show. Your wife actually pointed out. Oh yeah, we got some shortcomings here. A racist bastards forgot two of the best ones. Um, first, it's uh, the Jeffersons. Which we did listen to. Yeah, we listened to. We just yeah. never mentioned it on the show. Here it is playing uh, in the background a little bit. We we didn't mention Amen, which of course features Helmsley. What's oh yeah, his yeah. first Sherman Helmsley. Yeah, he's uh, uh, it's a very preacher. similar theme. Yeah, uh, it's got to think a little more Hallelujah. Yeah, chorus we listened to, to both it. of them though, yeah. like back to back. This is a great one though. Yeah, one of the best. I remember it a ton from from watching on TBS when I was a kid. You know, they'd show it in the afternoons and stuff when you got home from school. Great theme song. I though come down on the side of the theme songs with no lyrics. And there's another great one. Your wife's like, "What about this Sanford the, and Son?" That's the first one. She, that's the first one she went to. That's the first one she pointed out. It's way cooler than just about any of the ones that we've listened to. Yeah. I mean, it's got... It's maybe not cooler than Knight Rider. It's every bit as cool as... Uh, what's the, the the one with the two brothers? Say, Samson and... Oh, we also didn't say... Uh, we also, Simon and Simon. Yeah, we also didn't say Dynasty either. I don't even remember the Dynasty theme song. I don't either, but some people pointed it out to me. The Knott's Landing theme song, I remember. But I I think all of those are, they've got to be below. Twin Peaks? Dallas. Uh, Twin Peaks. I don't really remember that one either. Was it a lot of, 
and, and I'm just ready to get off the subject. <laughs> anyway, we've sorry we of, we spent a lot of airtime. We got a ton of feedback on it. I yeah. guess people are passionate about their theme songs. In retrospect, after hearing those two today, I'm going to say for me, it's Dallas number one, Sanford and Son number two, Knight Rider number three, as far as my best of all time. Uh, Cheers is is probably after that. I'm going to go, I'm sticking with Andy Griffith, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Knight Rider, in that order. Nice. Neither one of us taken Saved by the Bell, by the way. Although that's another one that a lot of people brought up. I just, I think it's very of its time. I'm a little nostalgic for it. It's not a great theme song, though. Yeah, see, I like uh, I like Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Like, uh, I, th- I think they're kind of similar. Yes. Uh, and I'm going to take Fresh Prince of Bel-Air over, what the fuck were we just talking about? Saved by the Bell. Saved by the Bell. Yes. <laughs> there you go. All right. And that is the final word on TV theme songs. Unless, you know, you email us and make us talk about it again which you're free to do not, two guys one pod at me.com don't do that people speaking of we got some listener mail Ooh, the mail's here <laughs> <laughs> you gotta watch out i'm gonna loop that shit and make you a theme song uh romanian is on board my friend the romanian is on board yeah i feel yeah. like i feel like he's uh i feel like by talking about him like he's the romanian like he's like uh some kind of assassin you know, that yeah. we're bringing in. Like yeah, we're bringing Jekyll. in from out of town. He's yeah. got diplomatic immunity. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I, I pinged really him. I really hope we get him to do his, like his mom's accent. I We're going to get him to tell the whale poem. The wh- You've heard the whale poem, haven't you? Balena? Oh, fuck yes, we're going to record Balena. Him doing nice. his, an impression of his mother telling the Balena story. It's badass. It's nice. awesome. All right. So I, I, I pinged him and I said, hey, man, look, I know you're already listening to the podcast, which I don't know whether he was or not. I said, so this is repetitive. <laughs> but I like to be assumptive. Assumptive? I like to make assumptions. Um, I said, uh, I know you're already listening, so this is repetitive. But uh, there's a reference to you in episode 10. So and if you weren't listening, wink, wink. Right, right. I tried to appeal to his pride. That's, I'm a salesman at heart. What can I say? So uh, I say you should listen to episode 10 if you haven't. There's a there's a reference to you, and pretty much we beg you to come on the podcast at some point, man. Come on. We'd love to see you the next time you're in town and, and get you in the studio. So he writes back. He says, O-M-G, exclamation point, exclamation Becky, point. look at her butt. He didn't say anything about anybody's butt, and Becky was not involved. It would have been a lot cooler if he did. I know. He said, you just made my day. There were three exclamation points after that sentence. So it's his, his his excitement is ramping up. He, he types like he talks. He does. I'd be honored, all capitals, <laughs> exclamation point. <laughs> I'm listening to episode 10 right now. A smiley face with big eyes. <laughs> there wasn't a smiley face. So I'll give him credit for that. But there was one more exclamation point <laughs> to make course. sure I got it. <laughs> so uh, the Romanian is on board. Uh, you know he's he's not uh, he's not in town he's not so close but uh, like we're gonna get him, him in as soon over, as possible. I like that we've built him up over two episodes. I hope he gets on and just bombs. <laughs> oh yeah, like we never get to air it because it's so shitty. No, we do air it and then we get like listener. Mail. They're like, really? That's the guy we waited for? Yeah. That's the out of towner? Hmm. Hmm. That's your ringer? Put that guy back on. Yeah, seriously. We also got we also got a uh, an email from he of many names. Of course we did. He begins, Subject, Edith Head. Where to start? When you watch Hitari, it is important to note that the animal captures are real. The actors are actually wearing those costumes, quote-unquote, while catching these animals. So there's a balance between fashion, quote-unquote, and utility that lends to the authenticity of the action while enhancing the presentation. Who's he quoting? Uh, no, the, no, the fashion and costumes are in quotations. He's making fun of you. You said last week that he can't he can't talk about manly movies while he's also talking about the costumer. Yeah, and, exactly, and he's doing it again. He's saying it's more than costuming. It's more than fashion because these are, in fact, uniforms. There's a utility to her costuming that leads to the, that lends to the authenticity of the action while enhancing the presentation. Edith Head isn't waiting behind some flat somewhere with a team of seamstresses those costumes are more like uniforms that's his uh how does how does he know that she's not like line. oh shit he he busted his button off now and i gotta go sew the button back on 
Uh, well, no. Uh, for instance, he, he's got a link here to a YouTube video uh, that talks about the costuming in, in Roman Holiday, the Audrey Hepburn movie, which Edith Head was, was on. He says even in a film like that, one of the most important aspects of her costume design is practicality. Every piece of Audrey Hepburn's costume has a purpose, and he's got a link there. We'll share that in our links this week. Um, practicality isn't exactly one of the staples of fashion, yet John Wayne looks damn fine in Hatari and Donovan's Reef and The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance and El Dorado, El Dorado, all Edith Head designed films. It's no wonder that Pixar decided to base their character Edna Mode off of Edith Head. I didn't know that. Did you? The yes. Edna Mode character, the little costumer? I didn't know it because of Edith Head. I, I knew it because of uh, because I watched like uh, commentary. On, on the Pixar movie or right. something? I got you. And I love The Incredibles, too. But I, I, I mean, I knew I thought she was based off of an actual costumer. I didn't know who. He says Edna Mode's job, of course, was to design costumes for superheroes that were practical and still fashionable. This is illustrated in the scene where she talks about how stupid capes are, which I agree with 100%. I've always, I've always wondered why nobody ever had that conversation in the comics, and to get it in a kid's movie was amazing. Um, between the years 1947 and 78, Edith had received eight Academy Awards for Best Costume Design and a total of 38 nominations. Excuse me, 35 nominations. In short... If there were a costume designer that a guy could respect, it would probably be the one that made the most guys look like men. And he, and he closes with a quote. You can have anything you want in life if you dress for it. Edith Head. That's not true. It's, what's, what couldn't you have in life if you dressed for it? You put Corky in an astronaut outfit. He's not going to the goddamn moon. <laughs> if you put him in an astronaut outfit and sent him to... Like no. the shuttle, you know, the Mm-mm. launch pad when they're when they're loading the ship, he might nope. go. He might get there. Mm-mm. They do head counts. <laughs> well, I'm, you knock one of the other astronauts out, and you substitute. He can't. It's Corky. He's not going to do that. Corky, you don't have to hit him in front of Corky. You put. You tell Corky to stay. Stay right here, Corky. I'll be right back. Get your seat ready. Then you knock out one of the other astronauts. You put him in line. And you have him walk. So behind. what does this fucking costume have to do with you knocking the dude out to get him on? Nothing. It has nothing to do with how he's dressed. You could just knock some dude out and sneak on anyway and not be dressed in the costume. And then something else here. The person that he's admiring in this, John Wayne, the man's man, man's man especially of that time period, aren't going to notice somebody's costumes. Man back then smoked cigars, drank whiskey, and pissed in the street. And if you're that dude, you're not noticing Edith Head. You're not. I, I disagree. I think I think he makes a very valid point there, and I love a ton of those movies that he mentions. So I, I I apologize. Edith Head, duly noted and recognized on Two Guys One Pod, at least by one guy, under protest. <laughs> so you got a a little news item for us? I'm already worked up, and this is just going to put me over the edge. I I like it though when you're on the edge. All right, so get this. Discovery. Did a uh, did a show mm-hmm. on the Discovery Channel about uh, mermaids, a body found. Okay, they set this up as if it's a, a documentary. Okay, but it's a mockumentary. Obviously, obviously, these scientists are actors. It's especially the girl. It's scientists. like it's like their dragon special. Like they did a special like that where worse, where they way talked worse, about way worse. Oh, okay. way worse. Like they they literally. From the beginning to the end of this until like the credits roll, uh, never mention that it's fake. Like it's 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 obvious. It's like a wink and a nod kind of show. Like it's okay. a mockumentary. I got gotcha. you. It's it's obvious, but because it because it's Discovery that does it, the idiots we were talking about earlier that's just providing food for trees. Yeah, believed it. Literally believed it to where the government had to come out with a statement. That said, people, mermaids aren't real, and this is how much I love our government, uh, tongue in cheek. Neither are zombies. Uh, well, now I now I knew that the CDC had had to come out recently after um, the series of stories about you know different people cannibalism or like people. There was the guy in Miami that attacked the, the face eater, you know, and then there was the college student that ate his his roommate or whatever. The CDC came out and said. No, there is no virus that we know that caused zombie. There is no T virus, effectively, and there is no zombie outbreak. There is no impending zombie apocalypse. None of those things are real. You're saying a government agency came out and said the same thing about mermaids? Yes. Oh uh, Christ! The, what a waste uh, the of taxpayers. O A A. 
the NOAA, the, the National, National Organization. Ocean, oh, the National Ocean and At- Atmospheric Administration. Nice. So there is no Ariel, and she is not looking for a whole new world. No, no. Like, how can you be a reasonable adult? But it was on a tube. And watch this and, and think that it's real, man. And here's the thing that's really going to make your blood pressure spike. All of those people that called. I want to choke. That forced shouldn't have the organization children. to come out. I'll, every single one of them gets to vote. Oh. What? <laughs> How are we still a superpower? Well, you know, it's, we've it's, got a lot of guns left. It's reasons got like a lot of this, guns left. It's reasons like this that make me appreciate the Electoral College. <laughs> when the world goes wrong, though, sometimes people need somebody to reach out to. Other guy. A pin pal. An ear. A little nook of advice. You and I talked last week about having a celeb confidant. No, actually, well, we did, but we haven't played that yet. <laughs> We're going to talk this week about... You and I, people can have their own celeb confidant if they reach out to the other guy. We want dear other guy letters. I don't. Uh, hold on, Let, I'm I'm having second thoughts. If you're going to ask me if mermaids are fucking real, I don't want to hear from you. <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying you know you know you got problems with your love life. Do you have a problem maintaining a budget? Hmm? You, do you hate your job? Are you looking for direction? The other guy, you're like my own little motivational guru. Man, I've lived. You have. Uh, for a man of your age, yes, yeah. you've, you've lived quite a lot. You've done a lot of things. You've worn a lot of hats over the years. You've been a lot of places. You've been in a lot of strange situations. Yeah, I, and I put myself in almost all of them. <laughs> yeah, but you're, you're also very much a guy that you're like, well, I know now. Yeah. I didn't learn a whole lot of like what to do's. I learned a lot of what not to do. Exactly. So avail yourself of that and write us a Dear One Guy letter. Two guys... Uh, one pod at me dot com. Two guys, one pod at me dot com. All spelled out. T W O G U Y S. One pod at me dot com. Here's what's going to be awesome. You will get an honest, true reaction because I don't check our mail. No, that's and a I true won't story. know about it until you read it to me on air. Exactly. So there you go. All right. Two guys, one pod at me dot com. You can hit us up with that. And uh, get your uh, little email read. Uh, anonymize yourself if you like, or uh, if you give us some info, uh, I'll give you a nickname too. No, I kind of want to end it like. Uh, I oh, kind of want to end it like. Like Dear Abby, so yeah. confused in Cincinnati. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Unemployed in Atlanta. Wasted time in my inbox. <laughs> Um, you need to take that? It's just my wife. <laughs> okay. Um, hello. Hey. Nope. Just about to be. We're, we're, we're just about to be done. I think we're going to do, uh, one more segment and then we'll be, we'll call it quitsies. Why? Where y'all at? I had you order me anything. I'll eat it cold. All right. Love you. <laughs> Liar. <laughs> All right. Bye. Sounds like you got places to be, sir. Oh, we got one more segment to do. Because uh, we keep forgetting to do get to know these guys. Oh, we, fuck. Exactly. Yeah, good call. We're going to forget good it again. Call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was totally going to forget it again. And I, I, I actually, I wrote it down. I wrote it down, and it's down here at the bottom of the list, and I just overlooked it. I everybody knows who I am. It's real easy to find me online. I'm I'm on Twitter at the Drunken Rogue. I'm on Facebook. Uh, I'm all over the place. You can find me in a lot of different ways. You don't exist online, and people wonder sometimes who the hell are these two guys. So we like to do a little segment. Who are these guys? By asking a question about our life and kind of reminiscing. When's the first time you remember being terrified? Huh. I was thinking about it today. And the first time that I can remember being truly overcome with fear, I was about six or seven years old. I mean, and I'm sure I was scared before this, but the first time that I remember lying, I mean, quaking. Yeah, I was, yeah, I was about six or seven years old. I'm laying in bed, 
and I had uh, just recently got a new book. That day was the first day that I had worked up the courage to read any of it. But it's one of these books you got, you know, at, at out of the uh, the catalog at, at your elementary school or whatever. You'd order the book with, and you know, and you pay like four seventy five for, you know, three books, and you get to take them home once a month or something. You get the new books. Yeah. And what's the what's the catalog? I don't know what the catalog's <laughs> called anymore. They have this one company that does it for everybody pretty much. Anyway, I'd ordered this book. It was a scary book because it was Halloween time. And it was a a book scared you. A book's the first thing that terrified yes. you. Yeah, it was a it was a book of scary stories. You know, there was lots of big illustrations, gothic, uh, simple cartoons, but very book. dark. No, it wasn't a pop up book. It was a collection of stories. Was it a choose your own adventure book. No, it was just very simple folk tale type things, like uh, you know the story about the girl that wears the scarf all the time. And Everybody's like, why are the scarf? Yeah, she finally takes it off one day and her head falls off. Yeah, yeah. That's in there. It's book. It's stories like that. All right. Or maybe it's a scary poem about a dancing skeleton. And then the next page is some children's version of the Telltale Heart or something almost, you know, like a simpler three-page kind of version of the Telltale Heart. It was – the illustrations, though, were very dark. Think like – books scared the shit out of me. Let's just put it like that. Okay. It scared me so much. I read halfway through it, and it was – it was so different than anything I'd ever read. It was very compelling too. So I kept I kept reading, but it was it was more than I could handle. And I finally I had to close it, and then I put it up on the shelf, and that wasn't enough because I could see the spine, and I would nightmares. think about the illustrations. So I had to put it under my bed, and then that wasn't enough. I had to wrap it in a towel, put it in the bottom of my toy box, and then like close the toy box and put shit on top of the toy box. In my head, that book was literally going to come and force its horrors upon me in the middle of the night or something. Yeah, I had nightmares for it for about it for months. I wish uh, I wish your mom would have came in and like while you'd gone to the bathroom or whatever, take a bath and had like taken the toys off of the toy box. Left the book out on the bed. Not not necessarily left the book out on the bed, but just had moved whatever you put on top of the toy box. If she had just moved it, you'd have been freaked the fuck out. Uh, I would have lost my mind, dude. I even like years later. Well, I had forgotten about the book, truthfully. I'm in a uh, I'm in a used bookstore in Ohio. I'm working summer theater one year, and I'm st- I'm thumbing through the stacks looking at the used books, and I pulled out a copy of it and I literally dropped it and had to walk out of the bookstore. I got I like ah, and I had to I had to leave. I had, I was a grown man. I was, you, I was 21 years old. Co- did you open the cover? I, I had wish to put it, it down. said property of of one guy. Yes. Oh no, no. No, 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 no. That shit would have been too much for me. I would have shit my pants. I would have shit my pants right there in that used bookstore. Um, I was quite young the first time I was terrified. And again, it goes back to my parents were the first terrorist in my life. Um, I wasn't very good at taking naps a- at all. I hated taking naps. And I you know, just want to play just get a lot of energy, man. Yeah. So my mom sat me down one time and, and let me know that hey, you, you need to start taking your naps because the community got together and we signed we signed a contract with this witch, man. This witch happens to have a, uh, a frog that she employs and this frog's job, the frog's name's Leroy, by the way, and Leroy hops from house to house to house and he looks through the windows to make sure the children are taking their naps when they're supposed to. Oh, Jesus. And if they're not, Leroy reports it to the witch. The witch comes, swoops you up, and cooks you and eats you in a big cauldron, like a big witch pot. And all the parents have signed this contract. That's too right? much. So I'm literally. I mean, did you? Did you? Well, you're young enough to buy it. They tell you, and you just buy it. Uh, I I don't. I can't remember. If I mean, I'm, you're you're in a world of Santa Claus and the Tooth Fairy, yeah, and, yeah, so yeah. it makes sense. Maybe. I okay. mean, the hide behinds were real at this point. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good right? point. So <laughs> the hide behinds. So I'm jumping, uh, I'm I'm jumping on my bed or something, uh, not paying attention. I hear a tap on my window, and it just all comes flooding back to me. Oh, the contract! Shit, it's Leroy. Yes, I thought it was Leroy because I hear a tap on the window, and boom, I'm laying flat on the bed, cover completely over me, you know, trying to melt through the mattress. Right. Uh and, I mean, you see these scary movies, and these monsters can just tear down buildings and jump over stuff. They can't get through that cover, dude. Not happening. Monsters cannot get through the cover. It's a rule. Yeah, totally safe. Yeah. Uh, and, man, I'm getting, I'm sweating. It's getting hard for me to breathe. And nothing's happening at this point. I'm just pissed. 
because I can't breathe. I'm so uncomfortable under like four blankets nice. in the middle of summer. Nice. Uh, so I'm just like, screw it. It, I, it must have just been something tapping the window. Like it wasn't Leroy, which hasn't come to get me yet. Right. So I throw the covers off. And I'm, I'm, 30 seconds? A minute? Oh, no. Like, uh, I don't know. Probably Five three, minutes you waited? Yeah, probably three, four, five minutes. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's patience. I was waiting him out, man. I didn't want the fucking witch to come get me. Well, fair enough. Talking about so being So I start playing again, right? Right. Turns out it was my mom who tapped on the window the first time. Uh, she had gotten um, like this frog that you like you'd put in a garden, like you have garden gnomes, garden you know frogs right. or rabbits. The little rabbits. green like a plaster. Yeah, a frog. Yeah, it wasn't small. I mean, it was probably about eight oh, like inches. a big toad. Yeah, big toad. Nice. Uh, and so I'm up jumping again, and she 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 taps on the window, and uh, and puts this fucking ceramic raw frog silhouetted in the window. If four year olds could have heart attacks, that's what would have happened. You would have stroked out right I there. I would have stroked out. I've uh I don't think since I don't think I've ever been that scared in my life before or since. Uh, Leroy the ceramic frog. Yeah. Scared like I it backfired, uh, because I immediately left my room screaming. Ran into their room. I didn't. I I didn't sleep in my room again for I I don't know how long. Nice. It was an over overcorrective measure on their part. Yeah, they they fucked with me bad as a kid, man. But it didn't stop the terrorism, apparently. No, no. Well, look, uh, I don't want my parents to get a bad rap here. Sure, they, we know they did. They like they did good things too, right? Like if if we if I was good, and I just took my nap like I was supposed to. Uh, there was a little boy who, uh, as we napped, he would come by and water the tree in our front yard with sugar water. Right. And, uh, and candy would grow off of this tree. Uh, I'm not, I'm not fucking kidding you. Candy grew on this tree. Leroy, the ceramic frog and the candy tree. Yeah. But, and, and like I would take a nap and I would wake up and, uh, they would, if I was good. They're like, oh yeah, he came by, he visited you. You did such a good job taking your nap. And they would take me outside and my dad would lift me up and they'd be like, Tootsie Rolls and peppermints and bubble gum growing off this tree, and I'd just reach up and pick it. Now, you know, being four years old, I, I never noticed the paper clips clipping the candy to the leaves. So in my head, that little boy really did come and water the tree. A very strong system of rewards and punishment. Of <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I like it. All right. Well, that rounds up another uh, episode. Two guys, one podcast. I'm one guy. And I'm the other. And this has been the podcast. Hey, what it is? Play, play out. I'm on top by Mr. Shaw, man, and Sam on this thing. You know what it is?
it's the return of the player. Uh, uh, it's the return of the player. I'm the polo dead freshes. You know I dress the business. Oh, jock a nigga, it's a show. My freshness is for business. I was blessed to see my presence. And then I make my exes tell the friends she thinks I'm sexy. And she wanna see me naked. I show ass like D'Angelo. If you ain't had Sam before, then you ain't had a man before. So, shorty, I'm the man to know. You know that I'm a player. So, what the hell you like you planning for? Like I ain't been in jail before. Like I ain't been who I am before. Don't wanna meet your family, ho. Cause I ain't trying to be your man. You act like you can't pick the player. You can't execute the plan. My people keep it moving. You be losing. You don't choose your man. So, better choose wisely. Cause you won't get a chance to choose again. Not to cause confusion. No, I know that it's confusing. Pippin' no illusion, they won't prove, so I should prove to them a word without a synonym. There's nothing similar. I ain't been gone too long, so act like you familiar, bro. Hit the blood, nigga. Yeah. Turn the bottle up. Yeah. I got a couple model bitches trying to follow us. Uh, uh, it's the return of the player. If your bitch chose me, homie, I didn't take her. Bitch, I know I'm sure. I know I'm sure. Bitch, I know I'm free. I know I'm free. You can have that hoe, I'll pull the rest. Pull the rest. Uh, It's the return of the player. Uh, uh, it's the return of the player. Never making a man, but banging a friend, taking an end, cause keep a whole lot of being. Front of my mother, I'm a vote to the center, and I stick it in. I'm strictly out for the dividend. Give it to me financially, give it to her romantically. I'ma win my one so magically. I beat the brakes off a bitch at every speed. Do something to a hoe that you wouldn't believe. I gotta try for the rest, trying to hit my cheek. P I M P, bitch, motherfucker, pain shit. Girl, you better get a main script. But how to keep a nigga chillin' when you feel that he about to trip? Cause you know I keep an extra clip and an extra gun. Be next to die, be next to run, be an extra fly, be an extra fun. Hey, so I'ma make a moist. Fire up a sweet, fuck the freak of my choice. Mr. Good and chill look like Stitch in, man. I stay on their mind. And my meat going ham all the goddamn time. Very fluent with rhyme. Teach them boys how to shine. Yo, I might pull one of yours, but you ain't fucking with mine. So I'ma smoke two dimes. Ugly's uh, lose down the line. And we gon' keep it real player all the goddamn time. Hit the blood, nigga. Yeah. Turn the bottle up. Yeah. I got a couple model bitches trying to follow us. Uh, uh, it's the return of the player. If your bitch chose me, homie, I didn't take her. Bitch, I know I'm sure. I know I'm sure. Bitch, I know I'm free. I know I'm free. Bitch, 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 I know I'm free. B